Early life. Hein was born in Delft Shaven, the son of a sea captain, and he became a sailor while he was still her teenager. During his first journeys he suffered from extreme motion sickness. In his twenties, he was captured by the Spanish, and served as a galley slave for about four years, probably between 1598 and 1602, when he was traded for Spanish prisoners. Between 1603 and 1607 he was again held of captive by the Spanish when captured near Cuba. In 1607, he joined the Dutch East India Company and left for Asia, returning with the rank of captain five years later. He married Annika Clairstick to de Royce and settled in Rotterdam. In 1618, when he was captain of the Neptunus, both he and his ship were pressed into service by Venice. In 1621 he left his vessel behind and travelled overland to the Netherlands. For a year in 1622 he was a member of the local government of Rotterdam, although he did not have citizenship of this city. The cousin of his wife, one of the three burgomasters, made this possible. In 1623, he became vice-admiral of the new Dutch West India Company and sailed to the West Indies the following year. In Brazil, he briefly captured the Portuguese settlement of Salvador, personally leading the assault on the sea fortress of that town. In August with a small and undermanned fleet he sailed for the African west coast and attacked a Portuguese fleet in the strongly defended Bay of Luanda but failed to capture any ships. He then crossed the Atlantic Ocean again to try and capture merchant ships at the city of Vitoria, but was defeated by a resistance organized by the local citizenry with the assistance of the Portuguese garrison. After finding that Salvador had been recaptured by a large Spanish-Portuguese fleet Hein returned home. The Dutch West India Company, pleased with Hein's leadership qualities, placed him in command of a new squadron in 1626. In subsequent raids during 1627 at Salvador, he attacked and captured over 30 richly laden Portuguese merchant ships before returning to the United Provinces. Modern historians today often classify Hein as a pirate. Though he was more properly a privateer, the Dutch Republic was locked in mortal combat with the Habsburgs and Hein was among the most successful in famous commanders it employed during the Eighty Years' War. While many privateers behaved no better than common pirates, Hein was a strict disciplinarian who discouraged unruly conduct among his crews and had rather enlightened views for the times about Indian tribes slaves and members of other religions. Also, he never was an individual privateer but rather commanded entire fleets of warships and the fact that he was an admiral of the Dutch Republic should dispel such views. Spanish Treasure Fleet In 1628, Admiral Hein, with Witter with as his flag captain, sailed out to capture a Spanish treasure fleet loaded with silver from their American colonies in the Philippines. With him was Admiral Hendrik Lonkin. He was later joined by a squadron of Vice Admiral Deuce Bankert, as well as by the pirate Moses Coe and Henriques. Part of the Spanish fleet in Venezuela had been warned because a Dutch cabin boy had lost his way on Blanquilla and was captured, betraying the plan. But the other half from Mexico continued its voyage, unaware of the threat. Sixteen Spanish ships were intercepted, one galleon was taken after a surprise encounter during the night, nine smaller merchants were talked into a surrender, two small ships were taken at sea fleeing, four fleeing galleons were trapped on the Cuban coast in the Bay of Matanzas. After some musket volleys from Dutch sloops the crews of the galleons also surrendered and Hein captured 11,509,524 guilders of booty in gold, silver, and other expensive trade goods, such as indigo and cochineal, without any bloodshed. The Dutch did not take prisoners. They gave the Spanish crews ample supplies for a march to Havana. The release were surprised to hear the admiral personally giving them directions in fluent Spanish. Hein after all was well acquainted with the region as he had been confined to it during his internment after 1603. 
The capture of the treasure fleet was the company's greatest victory in the Caribbean. As a result, the money funded the Dutch army for eight months, and the shareholders enjoyed a cash dividend of 50% for that year. Hein returned to the Netherlands in 1629, where he was hailed as a hero. Watching the crowds cheering him as he stood on the balcony of the town hall of Leiden, he remarked to the burgomaster, Now they praise me because I gained riches without the least danger, but earlier when I risked my life in full combat they didn't even know I existed. Hein was the first and the last to capture such a large part of a Spanish silver fleet from America, Lieutenant Admiral. He became, after a conflict with the weak about policy and payment, Lieutenant Admiral of Holland and West Frisia on 26 March 1629 and thus factual supreme commander of the Confederate Dutch fleet, taking as flag captain Martin Tromp. He died the same year, in a campaign against the Dunkirkers. The highly effective fleet of Habsburg commerce raiders and privateers operating from Dunkirk. As it happened his flotilla intercepted three privateers from Ostend. He deliberately moved his flagship in between two enemy ships to give them both simultaneous broadsides. After half an hour he was hit in the left shoulder by a cannonball and was killed instantly. He is buried in the Audi Kirk in Delft, once again dispelling enemy propaganda that he was a pirate or privateer. Commemoration The Piet Hein Tunnel in Amsterdam is named in his honour, as is the former Dutch court and air-class frigate, our, Ms. Piet Hein, a direct descendant of Hein was Piet Hein, a famous 20th century Danish mathematician, physicist and poet. A song praising Admiral Hein's capture of the Spanish Silver Fleet, written in 1844 is still sung by choirs and children at primary school in the Netherlands.